everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I thought it would be fun to do a studio vlog. There have been a lot of different really cool projects that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks and they haven't really fit into any of the video ideas that I have been doing and so this is when the studio vlogs come in perfect because it means that I can sort of accumulate all of these different ideas and sort of actually talk about them and show you what I'm working on without having to try and fit them into a one particular video concept. But the first part of the studio vlog that I want to go over is I have a bit of another art haul, which honestly probably could turn into its own video, but I refuse to post art hauls so close together. I think it's been like two, three weeks since my last one, and this is like extraordinarily rare. Like in my defense, the one that I did post last, it was like an accumulation over probably like a month, a month and a half of products that I just hadn't really been showing in any videos. And so I figured I could sort of accumulate them all into a haul video, seeing as they were new products that some of them, a lot of them I hadn't had a chance to try out yet. But uh, for some reason in the last week, there's been sort of another bombardment of new art supplies, which it's going to probably be like another eight months before I buy a single pencil at all. So I guess, you know, you do all like art hauls as well. <laughs> I'm gonna flip to a more top-down desk view in a moment, but I do want to get a couple of things out of the way just because they're massive and they're absolutely not going to fit in frame if I film it that way. And those are these two extraordinarily massive pads of paper. Now, I recently uh, was looking in my stockpile of papers and stuff, and I just had the urge to work on a larger surface. Um, I was really actually just working on this sketch for a piece in between waiting for paint to dry for the last galaxy tutorial that I posted. So it was sort of like an impromptu uh, drawing session, but I did have the urge to work on something bigger and I wasn't entirely, I didn't have really like a set uh, paper type or size in mind. And I realized looking through my supplies that I actually don't have that much variety in larger sheets of paper. They tend to be like what I tend to like buy and try out are like the nine by 12 ish range of paper sizes, which is awesome, you know, like it, it does end up working well because if I didn't like the paper, you know, the 9 by 12s the smaller pads are the cheaper ones. But I really wanted to try out and also just generally get more of some larger sheets of paper because I can obviously cut these down if I didn't want to work this large. Uh, so the first one that I bought I technically own in smaller sizes, but it is the Canson Montball watercolor paper and this is in 15 by 20 inches. This pad is apparently 12 sheets and I do already really love this paper. Um, it's actually one of the very few pads of watercolor paper that I believe I have used an entire like pad of and repurchased or I have a particular pad that's getting really low which I obviously have a ton of art supplies, so for a pad of paper to be getting so low and possibly also have been repurchased is pretty good and rare. And so this was a pretty like low risk purchase because obviously this is just the same paper in a larger sheet. But something that I always sort of see pop up when I'm looking at watercolor supplies is the Windsor & Newton watercolor paper, which I have absolutely never tried any Windsor & Newton paper at all. So I'm super excited to try this. This is a 12 by 16 inch pad. Uh, I believe that it's somewhat of a watercolor block. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that it's, um, like, as opposed to this, this one is uh, attached with, like, it has glue on two sides at least, maybe four. Um, so whether I actually use it, like, on this as, like, a watercolor block or just remove the individual sheets and sort of tape it down like I would normally do, um, we'll see. But yeah, I'm super excited to try this out. This one is a 100% cotton watercolor paper, and I'm pretty sure that this was actually not too bad cost-wise. Obviously, 100% cotton watercolor paper does tend to be the most expensive, but I'm pretty sure compared to, like, the Arches variety, which I don't really like Arches that much, and I'm sure, like, a ton of people are gonna, like, come for me for saying that, but, um, it's just not my favorite. I'm always sort of looking, like, I do appreciate the quality and the consistency of 100% cotton watercolor paper, but 
Arches just is not the one for me, really. So I'm excited to try this one out and see if I enjoy using this one any more than that. I guess continuing on with the surface side of things, I decided to pick up the Ohuhu Square uh, marker sketchbook because I do plan on doing a sort of sketchbook showdown type of video and this was really one that interested me. This is marketed as a marker pad and I am not someone that generally uses markers but this has always been one that has interested me also because it is a square sketchbook and you know I love a good square sketchbook uh, but because it is marker paper. It is thicker so it's going to withstand um, wetter media like uh, different inks, possibly some gouache, probably not watercolor or at least not much watercolor uh, but because it is marker paper it's a lot smoother so it means that inks and stuff will glide on this super nice. So I'm excited to test this out and also just generally do that sketchbook test video. Next we have a whole slew of mechanical pencils. Now I do think I'm going to be doing an entire video on these because there's quite a story behind them but these are the Pentel Orents uh, mechanical pencils in all of the sizes that they come in, which I'm going to save the explanation for why I decided to go all out and get the entire set for that video. Uh, but this one is a 0.2 millimeter lead size, 0.3 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter, and 0.7 millimeter uh, lead capacity size, whatever you want to call it. Because apparently I was having a wild mechanical pencil day, I also ended up getting the Pilot Color Eno Mechanical Pencils. Now these have been something that I have considered for quite a while. I also did end up getting the LEDs which are all in here which basically the colors that you see here are these LED colors but these ones actually come with LEDs inside of them so the color that the pencil is is the color that the LED inside of it is. I just figured for simplicity's sake to actually have a pencil for every lead color and also be able to tell easily what color is in each pencil that I would just actually buy the pencils that are meant to go with the lead but obviously you could just buy the lead or like either all of the colors, one of the colors, whatever, and put it in your preference for mechanical pencil. Uh, these are 0.7 millimeter LEDs, so right now I just have them in these drawers, but like I said, all of the lead colors are reflected in these pencil colors. Other than just a bit of scribbling, I haven't really had a chance to test these out, but I am excited to play around with these in my sketchbook, seeing as I'm using that a lot more recently. Next is a bit of a strange thing. It is this butcher tray. That's what these are called, but essentially it's a very large paint palette. And I was going back and forth trying to find, like, I didn't care if it was a plate. I just wanted a large-ish flat surface that was going to work well as a paint palette, probably more for the gouache side of things. And this just ended up being the best option that I could find online easily. So this is like a branded uh, paint palette. It is called like a butcher tray style one. Um, but obviously if you could find like a porcelain or like ceramic dish of any kind that is sort of like really shallow and uh, flat like this one, that would obviously work as well. But this is what I ended up finding. And so yeah, I'm excited to try this out with some gouache hopefully really soon. And the last couple of things are art books. I guess we'll start with this one. This is the Sketching from the Imagination Creatures and Monsters book. This is an ongoing series that 3D Total Publishing has been coming out with and I think this one has been out for a few months but I just did not know that it ever existed until a couple of days ago and so I ordered it. I have the entire series. They are gorgeous books, super interesting um, and informative just the entire series is really cool. There's a lot of really interesting subjects. There's, let's see, the right beside behind me. There's like fantasy, sci-fi, characters, dark arts, and I believe there is like an anime manga one coming out. 
But yeah, it's just one of those books that any of them in the series I will most likely end up ordering, even if it's not particularly a subject that I am like super, super into. Obviously, like these creatures and character designs are really awesome to look at and just the line work in them. Even though I'm not someone that generally is drawing these more mythical creatures and stuff, it's just really gorgeous art to look at. And the last art book is The Art of Arrival, I think. I have been obsessed with her work for years and I knew that this book existed for quite a while and I just never got around to ordering it, so I figured when I was picking up the other one I would order this one at the same time. And yeah, it's just super gorgeous stuff. This is more like a stylized, but it's stylized work that is like just super visually appealing to me. I just just, I just have always really loved it and so I haven't had a great opportunity to really look through this but it is cool to see that it's not um, like obviously there's like tons of gorgeous artwork in this book uh, but it's also informative as well there's like an entire section about making your own watercolors and stuff so really excited to give this one a more thorough look and those weren't actually the last two things because I completely forgot about this tabletop easel. Now, I'd been researching and sort of looking at tabletop easels for the last couple of weeks, and eventually this is the one that I decided on. This is one of the kinds that is actually like a sketchbox type of easel. I know there's quite a few different varieties of tabletop easel, but I decided to go with this one ultimately because it's nice and small, which I already have a pretty large Windsor Newton um, easel that kind of looks like this. It essentially looks like this times like three uh, widths. So it's absolutely massive and annoying to sort of pull out and make sure you have the room on your desk for it constantly. And so I was looking for something much more compact that I could pull out for the more average size art project, which I have a few in mind, which is ultimately why I decided to get it now because I have some things that I sort of imminently want to work on that this would come in super handy for. And even though this is one of the sketchbox type of easels, I don't necessarily plan on using it for any sort of storage. I know that's a big selling feature for a lot of artists, but ultimately the sketchbox type of easels tend to be a lot sturdier since they have that extra weight on their base. And those are all the supplies that I had picked up over the last week or so, or I guess more accurately, the art bits that arrived at my doorstep. But the other thing, I mean, my studio is in kind of a little lot of bit of disarray at the moment, and it's mainly because over the past two weeks, I kind of went a little 3D print crazy, and I figured I would show you these projects because one of them is a very... Uh, intense life-size, I mean they're both life-size projects, one of them's gonna take significantly longer than the other to finish, um, but again, never get the chance to like show you any pieces that I'm sort of working on in between because I know I tend to not really make videos out of the 3D print projects that I decide to do, which honestly isn't a bad thing because I view the 3D printing and prop making for the most part as sort of like a hobby to me so not filming that isn't like a bad thing like obviously I do end up filming some bits depending on what it is but generally that's sort of like my time and not having to worry about camera and angle and all of that kind of stuff is sort of like a treat to me but anyway let's actually look at these pieces. So you can probably see what I mean by the studio just generally being in a bit of disarray. It's mostly this desk. The first thing that I ended up printing pr definitely a couple of weeks ago is this Grievous head. Good old General Grievous. Um, he is not finished by any means. He's like just straight plastic. The bottom of his face isn't even attached appropriately, um, but he is a super awesome, beautiful print. I will leave links to the files and stuff um, where you can find them below. Um, but yeah, he's just an absolutely, I mean, gorgeous might be pushing it considering it's General Grievous, but I mean, as far as model goes straight off of the printer, just the detail in him is absolutely insane. It's just, it's such a cool model. So 
he is actually like a life-size bust but uh, I'm not necessarily planning on making his entire bust I've been sort of gradually printing the pieces that make up more of his neck part but for the most part I think I'm just going to be sort of creating a custom display uh, using this acrylic rod which is also something I've picked up recently. I figured this is an inherently like traditional art supply so I didn't throw this in the hall. I mean who puts an acrylic rod in a hall? So that's the situation with him. But the biggest project is this pile of pieces over here that I probably should assemble to vaguely resemble uh, what this actually is. Okay, that was actually only one piece that wasn't like stacked appropriately and the rest was all good. Now this is a life-size IG-11 droid head from the Mandalorian, which actually this isn't even all of the pieces. I still have a couple to print, but I've sort of had a chaotic week and had to fix a few issues. Um, so he's not actually even fully, his head's not fully printed. Uh, but I sort of blitzed through his entire head in like less than a week, which is awesome. And I know you're thinking like, wow, like, you know, he looks almost done. Yeah, well, that's just the head because I'm a crazy person that decided they were going to build the entire droid. <laughs> which I will like put a picture here on the side probably in this so you can see what on earth this is going to end up being at some point. But yeah, I just decided like I obviously don't have any conventions that I'm going to be going to uh, this summer and I normally sort of do some sort of crazy project in the summer and so this year I decided let's build a life-size droid apparently. But I am really excited about this and because it is 3D printed it is somewhat making it itself and then I just get the lovely task of sanding it for hours and days on end and then painting it. But the painting is really one of the most fun parts for me and obviously Grievous will be getting painted at some point too and I know there's always like half baby Yoda heads everywhere. There's also a second sister helmet sitting there. I mean this has just really become the 3D print desk of unfinished projects but I figured you know take this opportunity to show you what I've sort of been working on on the side. This next section is very random. At some point last night when I was trolling through my YouTube recommendations I came across a video called how to make your own kneaded eraser. Now, a kneaded eraser, of course, is this gray squish that honestly is probably my most used eraser now. Uh, I just tend to grab this the most, and I was intrigued as to how one could make their own interestingly textured gray putty. And it's apparently extraordinarily easy, and I just happen to have this little end nib bit of what is my all-time favorite eraser. It is the Moo a uh, professional eraser. I'm not sure if it's called anything particular. Here is what a normal sized one looks like. So as you can see, much to love eraser. And so I am going to actually see if I can create a kneaded eraser out of this. So the general gist of how to make your own kneaded eraser is to create eraser shavings and then sort of knead it all together and the kneading process will most likely make it a lot more flexible and more kneaded eraser-like to create that putty-like texture. Another tip that came up a lot in the how to make kneaded eraser videos, because at that point I had watched multiples to try and find the most accurate and consistent way of success for making kneaded erasers, is if you find that it's not really holding itself together or it's not as sticky as you would like, that you can erase it on a sort of adhesive. So all I did was stick down a piece of painter's tape face side up and erase the leftover eraser bits on that to try and make it a bit stickier. Now, I will say that I think the Moo eraser was a great choice to try and create a kneaded eraser from because if you don't know, the Moo erasers are sort of marketed and known for creating these, as you can see in the upper corner, large pill-like uh, worms or whatever you want to call them. Like, it already likes to stick to itself, so creating a kneaded eraser out of something that already likes sticking to itself was like a great step in the right direction. 
And once you have a lot of eraser shavings, you, yeah, basically just try and smush them all together and get them to stick, which I know originally does not seem like it's working, but I think it's the heat from your hands. It starts to make the eraser shavings a lot more malleable and they will eventually start to like sticking together. Um, I was sort of going back and forth with the adhesive because I thought originally it wasn't really sticking to itself, even though it's quite a sticky eraser to begin with so I was just sort of experimenting trying to get it to be a consistency that I liked a lot and another thing that seems quite counterproductive but according to videos is also a way to make it stickier is to actually add graphite to it. So I scribbled a nice flat area on some scrap paper and just had the eraser pick that up and I do think it helped a lot with keeping the shavings holding together. And here is what my finished DIY kneaded eraser looks like. Now I will say it right off the bat, it is not the same texture as whatever one I was currently using. I don't even know if it's a particular brand, um, but that's not necessarily actually a bad thing. And I know this is one of those things that it's kind of hard to demonstrate its different texture, but you can see how generally kneaded erasers sort of pull apart like that. I'm not sure if adding any more adhesive would make it do that, but I actually don't don't mind the texture of my DIY one. I guess the best way that I could probably describe it is that it feels more firm, or at least it's less squishy, which I actually think is a good thing because it means that if you are creating a more fine point to try and erase um, some more fine details or maybe add highlights to a drawing, that my DIY one is probably going to hold its point a lot easier and longer than the other one. But the real question is, how well will this DIY kneaded eraser actually erase? I just laid down a quick scribble of graphite, and as you can see, the pre-bought kneaded eraser can remove it from the page pretty well. And as you can also see, my DIY one almost does it, I feel like, better. Um, it just definitely feels like it's possibly just a slight bit stickier. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like it's not like it's leaving residue all over the place. It just feels like it picks up the graphite a lot better because of its texture. And I think that in the long run, because it is a more dense, hard consistency than the store-bought kneaded eraser, it's going to mean that picking up more fine details, like when you roll it to a point, it's probably going to pick those areas up a lot easier and make them lighter, faster because it isn't that softer, more flexible consistency. Overall, this was a pretty fun and quick little project that I honestly, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to buy another kneaded eraser again because I really think that I do prefer my DIY one. It's also a great way to recycle those ends of erasers that you might not be grabbing for because they're starting to get harder to hold onto and there's no reason why you couldn't, in theory, combine different types of erasers to create one bigger kneaded eraser, so it's also great in the recycling aspect of things. And I think this is actually going to be where I end this studio vlog because I actually filmed a whole lot today hanging out with you all. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.